Okay guys, we are going to continue with the fifth videos for uh, chemical bonding where we are going to deal with the hybridization concept. So uh, the concept of hybridization is also useful to explain molecules with multiple bonds, which is a double bond and triple bonds. Now by using the concept of uh, hybridizations, okay, of the direct overlapping of orbital and side touching overlapping of orbitals, the formation of multiple bond in a thin molecule C2H4 and a thin molecule C2H2 are explained. So let's start off with the ethene molecule. So ethene molecule C2H4. Now hybridization takes place for both carbon in ethene molecule is sp2 hybridizations. So now when both uh, hybridized carbon is bonded together, one of the hybridized orbital overlap directly between the other, while the other two unhybridized uh, orbital is with another hydrogen atom. Meanwhile, the unhybridized PZ orbitals, both carbon atoms, side touch bond, form between each other and form another bond, uh, which is as shown in the diagram below. So now this is the ground state electronic configurations for the carbon where you have 2s2 and 2p2 so uh, in order to undergo uh, in order to form hybrid orbitals so one of the electrons from the 2s excite to the 2p so you have excited state so during excitation states 2s and 2p have the same energy levels however in these hybridizations only 1s and 2p orbitals involved in the hybridizations so only three of the shapes changes accordingly so now you form an sp2 hybridize in here, okay? Leaving one pz orbitals with contain one electron in it remain unhybridized. So you have the overall structure for one carbon looking like this. So this carbon is to use to overlap with the hydrogen later, okay? While well, this one is used to overlap with the carbon data, okay? So the shape take place is trigonal planar and the angle between the one, one pair, one pair electron is 120 degrees Celsius. So this is how the structure is going to be, okay, as illustrated in here. We have the carbon overlap with the hydrogens by using a sigma bond. So between the carbon and carbon, you form a sigma bond in between here. And in here, this is the unhabitized PZ orbital that we have mentioned. So the unhabitized PZ orbitals are doing a side touch bonding. So the side touch bonding share the electrons by touching at the side here. And eventually will form a type of bond which we call as a pi bond. So in another words, a direct overlapping bond is a sigma bond, a side touching, uh, a side lapse bond is called as a pi bond. So in terms of Lewis diagram, between C and H, you form sigma bond, sigma bond, because they are direct overlap. Here is also sigma bond and sigma bond. Whereas in C double bond C, one of them is a sigma bond, another of them is a pi bond, which is a side lapping bond. So this is how a uh, uh, ethene molecule is explained. So from the diagram, C double bond C, there are two types of bond. A sigma bond is a covalent bond formed by direct overlapping end to end with electron density concentrated in between the two nuclei of the bonding atom, while the second type of atom is called as a pi bond, which is defined as a covalent bond formed by sideway overlapping orbitals with electron density concentrated above or below the plane of the nuclei of bonding atoms. So this is how we show the formations of the C double bond C. So you're going to learn in C triple bond C. So a time molecule has a Lewis structure of HC triple bond C, which is bonding can be explained using SP hybridization. So table below describes how SP hybridizations take place. So uh, as usual, carbon has the valence electronic configuration of 2s2, 2p2. So one of the electrons from the 2s excite to 2p. So when it occur, between the 2s and 2p, they share, they share equivalent energy levels. So because SP hybridizations take place, one of the S and one of the P undergoes hybridizations, so only one and one S and one P orbitals undergoes orbital hybrid. So they will change to become a linear shapes accordingly. So when this happens, okay, uh, there will be two orbitals remain unhybridized, okay, which is the uh, PY and PZ orbital. So when they remain unhybridized, the shape remain unchanged like it's here. So in here, uh, the hybrid orbitals will directly overlap in between each other, where carbon and carbon, they will directly overlap each other to form what we call as a sigma bond. Okay, so the another hybrid orbitals will overlap with the hydrogen atom to form another sigma bond. So this one also will form another sigma bond. Whereas the PY and PZ orbitals, which does not undergo hybridizations, which contain one electron, will eventually form a side touch bond. So since you have two orbitals which are unhybridized, so in another word, you are expected to form two pi bonds in here. So in short, of the Lewis structure, you have this is a sigma bond, sigma bond, sigma bond. 
pi 1 and also pi 1 in here. Okay, this shape form is a linear shape and the angle between the bond pair is 180 degree. So other examples of application of valence bond theory including the formation of nitrogen molecule and hydrogen cyanide. So nitrogen gas is Earth's most abundant gas as it covers 78% of the content in our air. So nitrogen molecule is an inert gas thanks to the short covalent bond and also the short uh, strong triple bond that forms between them. So therefore a lot of heat is required to break the chemical bond of the nitrogen before it can apply in the stream. So using valence bond theory, the bonding of the nitrogen is explained. So when the two, uh, two hybridized nitrogen atoms interacting among each other, they hence form a linear shape and the two pi bonds are formed as a result of side lapping of the unhybridized. So in other words, uh, in the N triple bond N, one of them is a sigma bond, two of them is a pi bond. Okay? So in terms of the, the uh, hybridization concept, we can explain using below. So uh, this is how we explain for the nitrogen. So nitrogen has a valence electronic configuration of 2s2, 2b3, where one of the electrons from the 2s, as usual, will excite to the 2b in order for the 2s and 2b orbitals to have the same energy level. So when this happens, one of the 2s and one of the 2b will undergo hybridization to form sp hybridization, leaving py and pz remain unhybridized. So when PY and PZ remain unhybridized, so you have one more electron inside them which eventually will form the single electron. Now note that in the SP hybridized, one of the orbitals is already occupied by two electrons. So these two electrons eventually will form what we so call as the lone pair electron. Okay, so the uh, nitrogen takes the linear shapes and you form a N triple bond N here by using the two pi bonds there. Okay, so this is for nitrogen. Now, as for hydrogen cyanide, so hybridizations take place for both carbon and nitrogen in order to undergo a sp hybridizations. So, carbon with the valence electronic configuration of 2s2, 2p2. Uh, nitrogen has the hybridization of 2s2, 2p3. Valence electron of 2s2, 2p3. So, each of them undergoes the excitations where electron from the 2s will excite to 2p as usual. So uh, during excitation state, both 2s and 2p are already occupied. Now in here, carbon, because it only goes sp hybridization, so one of the s uh, hybridized with one of the p for sp hybridization, so same goes to the nitrogen. So leaving py and pz is un unhybridized with one single electron in it. So when this happens, between the carbon, so carbon will have two orbitals readily to be hybridized. So between the carbon and nitrogen uh, hybrid orbital, they will overlap to form a sigma bond. For the carbon, there is another hybrid orbital which is ready to form a hybrid orbitals with hydrogen atom. Whereas uh, the two unhybridized orbital, Py and Pz, will form two pi bond eventually. So in here, between the carbon hydrogen, you form sigma. This is sigma, and then for the rest of them, this is a pi, and this is a pi electron. So this is how you show the bonding formations inside the hydrogen cyanide. Also, um, however, there is a few limitations in the valence bond theory, such as when explaining the effect of the angle for bond pair bond pair electrons, as there are presence of the lone pair electrons. So using bonding of ammonia and water as molecule, we have a look at the examples. So uh, nitrogen and oxygen has the valence electron of 2s2 and 2b3 respectively, uh, 2s2, 2b3, 2s2, 2b4 respectively. So this is the ground state electronic configurations. So in order to undergo hybridization, similarly, so one of the electrons from 2s excite to 2b for both carbon and oxygen. So all of them take sp3 hybridizations. Okay? So in sp3 hybridization, rearrangement is very similar to a tetrahedral arrangement in here. So uh, in here you expect that uh, nitrogen in ammonia will have a one lone pair electron, while uh, oxygen in water will have two lone pair electrons. So, uh, as a result, due to the presence of the lone pair electron, the repulsion between the lone pair bond pair is stronger. So, uh, it, will, as it will cause the angle between the uh, nitrogen, hydrogen, nitrogen, hydrogen bond here to be no longer 109.5. Instead, it is a mere 107 degree. As for water, water you have three types three type of repulsion, which is between lone pair and lone pair repulsion. Lone pair bond pair repulsion and also bond pair bond pair repulsion. So this is the strongest among all of them, followed by this one, stronger, and this is the weakest among 
uh, all the repulsion that we have in here. So this strong repulsion will cause the angle bonding angles to be further squeezed down to 104.5 degree. So uh, because of this, the angles are different from the tetrahedral. For uh, ammonia, it is called as trigonal pyramidal. For water, it is called as band. <coughs> so with this, that is all for the fifth video for the chemical bonding. And we'll continue on next time. Thank you. Thank <coughs> you.